Where were you on June 21st, 2014? Were you in Cambridge, Massachusetts at Pandemonium Books and Games at the Netrunner Regional Tournament? If you weren't there, this is the video for you. <laughs> it's the Elimination Rounds, game number 26 on the bracket. On the left, Chris M, the 11th seed. On the right, Dan P, the 13th seed. Lucky number 13. Dan P playing Kate. Running. Chris M. Corpin with the Tenon Institute. Aw, oh, snap. Any turn on which Chris M. does not run is a turn... I mean, on which Dan P. does not run is a turn on which Chris M. will get a free advancement token on card of his choice. A click and a credit. Uh, Dan P. going to have to be running every turn here. Uh, find some way to stop those. Otherwise, Trick of Light is probably coming out really fast. Or some kind of trap, or who knows what. Chris M. still rocking the amazing play, Matt. Dan P., after my own heart, wearing a Mets shirt in Cambridge. Let's go Mets, baby. Yeah. Don't play like the Mets. <laughs> that would not be good for your tournament result if you had a Met-like game of Netrunner. <laughs> Dan P does a couple interesting things. Uh, I think it's the only video I have of him, and I didn't play against him. With his money, he's got his money all lined up there, down in the left. He moves it from the top of his play mat when he has it to the bottom when he doesn't have it, right? So it's always he it doesn't you know have a sort of like a, a you know so supply of those two long lines there, and his actual credit pool is in the just that one fiver up there. Also, we all. Shuffle our hands a whole bunch. Uh, you know, some more than others. Dan P, I think, is the most extreme case of hand shuffling I've ever seen. Not only does he do it, not only does he do it nonstop, he does it fast. Everything he does is fast. He plays fast, shuffles fast, clicks his cards fast. He does way fast. If only the Mets were that fast, we might win. Sometime. Again, in my life. More than once. It's checking R and D, denying the ten in, dropping the voice pad. Looks like a voice pad, Kate. We've seen a few of these. They were extremely popular at the tournament for some reason. Um, personally, I'm not into it. I think I mentioned that in another video, but well, I mean, he got this far. There's not too many players left, so you can't deny its strength. Lucky find. So he ran R and D voice pad. Lucky find. Big money off the lucky find. Any money event for a runner turns the voice pad recurring credit into a real credit. Okay, Tenon has iced up the centrals, denying more of those free runs. But even so, Dan P still runs, still runs the archives to deny the Tenon ability. There's only a hedge fund in here, but he spent a whole click. A whole cl I, Like, I would hesitate to do that. Am I really going to spend a whole click just to deny you that? I would have sooner run one of the ICE servers, check the ICE, than um, we just throwing a click away. Especially at SMC in hand, too. We could have slapped the SMC down and then run. I don't know if that was click four or not. Okay, so... Uh, Corp drawing a whole bunch of that Jackson and then dropping cards away in archives. Is he, is he uh, escaping an agenda flood? Is he, or was he just trying to dig up a shock to make the archives deadly? Uh, runner just getting a data sucker during the corpse turn. Running archives. There is a shock in there. The other card's getting Jackson back in. He's going to take the net damage, but he's still going to deny the tenant ability. Losing a test run in the process. 
He just really wants to deny Tenon. Diesel, data sucker. Two data suckers. I don't know, does he think Jinteki has really big ice, or does he want to get more data suckers per run for greater efficiency? I'd be more worried about seeing something like a Komainu now. Oh, nope, now that you've seen the ice, maybe you do want two data suckers. A celebrity gift show to Eli Tolbooth Grimm. That is some danger right there. One of those ice just got installed in R&D. I guess you better be prepared to deal with any one of them. Dirty Laundry the Archives. He wants the money so badly he's going to take the net damage. It is a key master. I guess, you know, if you have programs, not too bad to take a net damage from a program. He's already showing it's not a kill deck, so it's not a lot this tenant can probably do to kill him in one swoop. Uh, so taking a couple net damage... If the benefit is big enough. He's only done two so far. One of them he only denied a tenant token, but the other one he dirty laundry and denied a tenant token and got data suckers. Uh, especially with a shaper, you got clone chips. If you know your net damaging programs or other cards you don't need because you don't care too much about anything in your hand, not the worst. Not the worst. Maybe it's a price worth paying. QT, quality time. We got double ice in the centrals, ice in the archives, shock in the archives, upgrade in the HQ. Quality time finds Desperado. Sure gamble. SMC. Woof. Tenant ability activates. He did not run. He quality timed and installed three things. I guess if you let the tenant ability activate once, and the only things they have to put it on are not a you know cannot possibly be agendas uh, or traps of any kind. Uh, the worst I guess that could happen to you is an ice wall got advanced once. Uh, but if they had an ice wall and they had trick of light, they would just advance it themselves if they had if you forced them to. So letting one tenant go not bad. Letting two go suddenly activates a trick of light that could come off of who knows what kind of ice. Something not easily uh, cleared. Okay, he goes for archives again to deny the tenon. Uh, then he goes for R and D. If you're gonna go for R and D, well, I guess you might have not succeeded at R and D. No reses at R and D. Wow. No reses. Uh, you know what it could be is that look, he's got an SMC, two data suckers that are loaded. Right, so why res if you know that that rig, uh, you know, all those data suckers will clear, right? Is that if that's like a grim because we saw a grim in HQ before, right? Uh, if that's the grim, you don't want to res it and not trash something. That's just giving them a bad pub. So maybe, uh, you know, wait for a situation. That, don't res it if you know. Wait for a situation where resing it's going to do some good. All right, there he goes. Clear. Virus counters. Maybe that was what he was waiting for. Don't res, don't res, don't res. Clear virus counters. Now, if he tries, all the servers have unresed ice on him. But there's an SMC on the table, and he's got plenty of money. He's got uh, 5, 10, 15, 16. Could probably still go archives. Well, I guess he'll get shocked again. Doesn't seem to mind getting shocked. If it denies the tenant ability. Tenant ability is sort of backwards. It's like, hey, listen up, runner. Yep. If you don't run, good things happen for me. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I'm a runner, so running's sort of my thing. I'm just, I'm just going to run because that's what I do. Oh, so, yeah, so good things aren't going to happen for you because I'm, I'm going to keep running. Oh. Oh. You're just encouraging the runner to, to beat you. <laughs> you have to find a way to make running bad for them, which is hard to do. Uh, he ran. Turns out the advanced card was a booth. Booth. <sighs> SMC brings out the fem. Eli. There's no data suckers to help out the inti. But does he have? He has the two clicks to break it. 
costly. Sees a grim. Gets desperado. Gets data suckers. Celebrity gift. He's been using archive memories to celebrity gift over and over, uh, showing the same cards. There isn't any PD in there. Rudder's already got a brain trust. Corp has nothing. Uh, I'm not so sure you want to show him an any PD. Well, maybe there's an uh, there's that uh, upgrade there on HQ. That's probably a caprice. Could be very difficult or expensive to go after the any PD. But yeah, why then why go after it, right? What's the corp going to do? Put it in a remote with one advancement on it? Put it in a remote, not advance it, wait for Tenon to fire, then advance it once with the Tenon and then three times the credits? Oh my god, he threw out the toll booth because the fem token was on it. Ooh, uh, I would leave that toll booth out there, even though it, you have to pay an extra credit for the install on the next ice because, number one, it's they're costing them one every time. And two, uh... If they have to scavenge their fem somewhere else, then you're, uh, you're told, you know, they, they say to abandon the toll booth. You paid A for that. Get, you know, get something out of it. Hey, pits up R&D. It's the Grim. He's got enough data suckers to break it with fem. But then the Eli is still costly. Double clicks it. Gets two data suckers back. And one Desperado credit sees medical breakthrough. Ooh. 4-0. The clone ship came out. I mean, that clone ship is basically a key master right now in case code gates appear. Like a Yagura or something like that. Or an Inazuma. But not a lot of money left uh, for the runner there. Not a lot of money left. Uh, he needs a lucky find. But if he starts digging too much, suddenly the advancement token comes out. That's another reason I would have kept that toll booth. Uh, it had an advancement token on it. From the one time the Tenon ability fired, just threw it away. Now you need Tenon to fire twice more to get your Trick of Light on. Without an ice wall or something. What's happening here? All right, we have to take a little break here. A little, I've never seen this before in a Netrunner tournament. We have an injury timeout. A core hurt his finger. Had to find a Band-Aid. Going to fast forward a bit here to when he comes back. Our fearless corporation returns from the hospital. All healed up. Ready to defend against the runner's evil ways. Runner goes for HQ. No rezzing? Rezzing? Not rezzing? Right after the injury, goes straight for the HQ. Rezzes a Himitsubako, even though an Inti is on the table. Not bad. Because uh, then he's got to use a Data Sucker and the Bad Pub. Oh, but then he gets two data suckers back. I guess at least you're costing him a data sucker on every run there. He wants to access the upgrade first. It's Caprice. He just trashes it. Why not res the Caprice? Maybe low on money. There's Trick of Light in the HQ. I guess he means so, you know, he means is only a res for two, and it's slightly annoying uh, up against the threat of Inti. Goes for HQ again. Another no res. There's an NAPD. He's got the four credits. 6-0. 6-0. A very unmet-like score. But let's go Mets. Taking money. Seems the tenant's low on cash, even though all those celebrity gifts. I guess, you know, your res toll booth. A Grim and a Eli. That's a lot of money. Dumps a card. Another voice pad over there. It's a little late for a voice pad. 
But then again, he hasn't played too many events uh, over there. I'm sure he's got enough more to make it worthwhile. Plus the same old thing. What's that card? Oh, that's the Jackson used earlier. That's not part of the game. Okay. Oh, was the 10 in ability supposed to fire there? I think it might have been. Uh, it might have been missed. Well, it's not going to fire this turn because Dirty Laundry is coming into HQ. It's just the corp just doesn't have doesn't seem to have enough credits there to make the runner scared of any conceivable ice. Uh, the dirty laundry is going to happen. The red ice is not resed. He's checking his data suckers and his credits. Desperado, and then he accesses brain trust. Game over. Eight nil. Eight to nothing. Oof. Brutal. Brutal. I guess you know. The voice pads weren't used very much, but uh, yeah, that just that just went poorly. I mean, how many how many R agendas did he access? Top off R and D, right? Oof. Very strong game right there.